But other than that, very, very similar to Yuya's list. His sideboard is significantly different. He does not have the one spectral flight. <sighs> These kids, no can, spectral flight. Can you believe it? Like I know. The, Yuya Watanabe ran a spectral flight. Uh, he, do, he has four mental missteps, but I don't imagine he sided those in against uh, this Thalia, Avacyn's Pilgrim, Birds of Paradise deck, especially on the draw, which he may very well be. Evan Wagstaff is playing Pod again, as he did very well with it in the Invitational, and his list looks... I, I saw his list at the Invitational, it looks basically the same. Uh, he has Dismembers, he has a one Bonfire of the Damned, the Michael Hetrick, as I like to call it. you got to have one Demise for it, right? Uh, yeah, Yuya, it looks like it's actually almost exactly Yuya's. Just the mutagenic growth has become a Mana Leak. And, okay, yep. and, the, okay. and the Rune Chanter's Pike, a sword. One sword, yep. So, uh, Evans got a pretty conventional pod on that. He's only running two pods, so he's much more of a Naya mid-range deck, it looks like, uh, with pod to uh, sort of just help him along. Uh, his Dismembers, Bond for the Damp, he's got a little more removal than most. Garrick, obviously, can double his removal as well. Since we're post-board, let's look at that. Evans got sort of worm pieces in the Hell Riders that Michael Hedrick also popularized, so he can do the same semi conversion into a green red aggro deck. And his board actually looks very similar to the Rug Pod sideboard that uh, Michael Hedrick ran, even though he is in fact playing Night oh, Pod. It's a little holla out there. Yeah. That was actually one of the my favorite parts of Michael's deck was the Hell Rider sideboard. It's very potent if people don't see it coming in the post boarded games. You can put so much pressure on them so fast, and they were just expecting you to sit there and play with your artifact all day. You know, and Hell Rider <laughs> is just very, very aggressive. Like, just looking at this, one of the things that we would see sometimes in like let's say uh, I was thinking about Jackie uh, Jackie Lee's red green list, where it had the Hell Riders and the Swords, and mm -hmm. then fantastic. Um, then Metamorphs, Fredericks and Metamorphs, to be more Hell Riders and Swords, primarily. Yep. Though it could always do things like copy a Legend or copy whatever else was useful. And in the days since Avacyn Restored, I think we've seen that deck really decline um, in its popularity, primarily because of one card, Restoration Angel. I agree. Uh, it looks like Daniel lost Game 2, the sideboard game, because he gets to start in Game 3. He starts with Island. Uh, and he has the gut shot before he draws a card, I think, from Evan. Evan Wagstaff. Showing off the gut shot was already <laughs> there. It was always there. Evan Wagstaff uh, getting the ideal open for his deck, which is a turn one mana source, and the ideal response, there's the gut shot. The danger of a deck like Evan is playing is the possibility of snappy gut shots. Yep. And, oh, mm. how many? you got enough gut shots for these guys? You got a snappy? <laughs> one Snapcaster Mage would... Uh, Looks Thought like scholar, we're snagging perhaps. one. I think we're snagging the birds because we don't want to get hunt mastered on turn three. And another snag. Wow, Whoa. that is a lot of resources I going away. I smell a geist of Saint Trap. Otherwise, or no, we can't. Can we? Oh, we have geist. Okay, yeah. Yeah, sorry. there are four geists in this list. All right, I I like this play if we have a geist. If we don't have a geist, it seems a little too aggressive. Let's see. Uh, that's three mana. Boom. One, two, three. That's geist a three-turn clock right now, assuming no resistance, which is a bad assumption. Now, do we have a Blade Splicer? Because that's what Evan wants right here, badly. He has three in his deck. Borderland Ranger is not as good, but <coughs> might suffice. But those are pretty much the only cards we're fighting against with. The cavern is probably a human cavern. I imagine. Yeah, we've got confirmation from the director that that is, in fact, a human cavern. Borderland, Borderland Ranger, Ranger, not terrible, not ideal. Uh, it, can be, it can be removed by a Snapcaster to the Vapor Snag, or... A attack with the Geist and then a Restoration Angel to save the Geist yeah. is another possibility. Or Pike. pike or a Pike. A Pike will do a lot of damage if we there. Are, if we have our Mutagenic Growth post board, even that will do the trick. Yeah. There are a lot of things that can go wrong. Two here. Mutagenic Growths here. Um, if, if Daniel perhaps saw the aggressive possibilities of, of Evan, if Evan went there, it's very possible that Daniel might also have Timelys um, from the board. But if that is the case, it's likely that Timelys won't be very useful this game. No, I, I don't think I like Timely when I'm on the play in this matchup. I, I don't board it in very often, personally. Yeah. Daniel's thinking it over. And Seacrum into play, post. taps. That's no Restoration Angel, we know that much. Nor a Pike. And now he's paused. Yeah. <laughs> Unless he has another Geist in hand, I bet you that Geist is going to hang back. I think I see a Restoration on another gut shot is what I look, it looks like over there. And the mountain means Huntmaster, potentially. Uh, I think I saw him. Yep, there uh, he is. Okay, now we're starting to see the danger of the aggressive, aggressive Vapor Snag plan. Now we have almost no cards in hand. We're facing down the best card in our opponent's deck. 
and we don't have any good attacks. I think we're, if that is in fact restoration angel, we'll jam through for four, but it's not ideal. And we can very easily run out of spells against the Huntmaster here, which is a dangerous position to be in because as soon as your opponent has the ability to start flip flopping, especially because he has those one mana producers. That Absolutely, we, we know they're there. You got to watch out for that. I mean, I think Daniel just has to attack and do the Restoration yeah. Angel protection trick. He doesn't even have other cards in his hand. like Restoration Angel gut shot. Like, what's he going to do, you know? And we see the double block. This is a defense against the single Vapor Snag. Yep. And the Angel just to protect the Geist. Sadly, the Angel that's in play attacking still remembers its orders to go away at the end of the turn. Yes. Or at the end of the attack. Evan untaps. On 16. And he can just... 18 life, I imagine. All right. Or no, the Vapor Snags. I'm sorry. Yep. 16 life. I mean, he can just sit and flip if he wants. I, 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 you can sit I'm not saying he, I'm not saying he yeah. should, but I mean, like... I, I don't like it very much, unless you have something else you're doing. His hand is chock full. He even has another land. Everybody in. Everybody in. Ooh. Bonfire, bonfire for two. perhaps. Now, is it? Does he have it, or is he threatening it? I, I think he has it, but if I if someone makes this attack, aren't you just like, oh god, <laughs> what could he have? I mean, oh, uh, and the angel. That is also that's very awesome. Plus two life, plus one wolf. I really like that attack, regardless of whether he has it or not. <laughs> the angel obviously makes it pretty close to move, since it's basically just as good. Note that we basically traded our Huntmaster flip for the additional damage with this sequence and getting an angel onto the board during and, our well, turn. And the, the Huntmaster can still flip very easily. Yep. Daniel might not have a spell that's worth casting. Well, I think that's the, one of the reasons it's better to make this play is because now yeah. Daniel has pressure to make a spell. There's a Ponder. We just got a report from the field on Ari Lax with one loss still to his name. X and one. That puts him seven, at six, uh, six and one. Three rounds remain. Pondering for Daniel Wilson. Extensively pondering from the uh, look of it. He's in a tight spot. Needs certain cards. Uh, obviously, Sword of Warmpiece is probably up there if he can deploy that. He's going to be up against a wall with that Hunt Master very soon. He's made so many creatures that it's risky for him to get offensive unless he has some way to get back to momentum. Remember what I was saying about Timely not being probably very <laughs> useful for him this game? <laughs> things let's, let's things take change. that back. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, uh, Timely... I, I like Timely a lot in situations when you have a card that can get through for damage consistently, which in this case would be Restoration Angel because your opponent's probably going to be attacking you. Evan has definitely demonstrated it's within his range to just send everyone. Gavini, Township. Township. Oh, Ouch. Right. Let's uh, reach for the slit. <laughs> uh, this is not good for Daniel. I think that that's pretty clear. He now has significant incentive to not play spells and flip that Huntmaster. Uh, just as Daniel now has significant incentive to try and kill that Huntmaster pretty quickly. It's going to start flip-flopping very soon. Wow. We see two wolves, a borderland ranger, a huntmaster of the fells, a bird of paradise, and an angel, a restoration angel, in play for Evan. On the other side of the table, a restoration angel and a geist of St. Traft. Uh, if he sends everyone and Daniel has nothing, the geist will have to block. He's just going to send the angel. He's just going to hold back. And Daniel does not have a good block here. He can throw away an angel, um, or he can just take four. But just take four means he'll have his life halved to six when that Huntmaster flips over. Yeah. We see the block, I think. Now remember, a Restoration Angel cannot be saved by another angel. That's true. But Gutshot gut will save the day. So there is going to be a trade unless uh, there's some sort of secret trick that Evan has in his hand that we did not see. And importantly, that is a spell that will keep Huntmaster from flipping. So the two life he paid for the gut shot is actually kind of free. And he's uh, like, and it's dead. Oh, but he's no, plus one, not. plus one. He's hey, not. gut oh, shot. Oh, he didn't. I was fully expecting a snapcaster here, but that is not what we have. Oh, yeah. I thought there was going to be more as well. Wowza. 
This was awkward for everyone involved. Well, we can take back some of what we said. <laughs> Daniel Buzzy here. Looks like... Apologies to that guy. I just assumed his last card was Snapcast when he made that one. This was just a uh, awkward play. Now we're facing down uh, approximately 1,243 damage. Well, I mean, Daniel was at 2810 earlier, I think. <laughs> yeah. Or 2811. So, I mean... That's a... Yeah, it's not even enough, really. <laughs> and we're still at the end of Evan's turn. There's still time to Snapcaster here. Okay, maybe maybe he doesn't. Maybe we're all under Daniel's spell. I don't think like even that's not gonna be enough. Okay, he does Snapcaster. Okay. Well, if this was our line. Now we're paper oh, snagging though. This is just now weird. we're paper snagging. I feel like the gut shot got really awkward now. Well, we could have gut shotted the birds, so that's kind of strange. Yeah, I think. I think Daniel actually did think he's, his angel was going to get to trade there, and now he's forced to just try and recoup. He's not one of those sweet decks with Day of Judgment in the sideboard, though, so he's probably going to have to pack it here. Timely Reinforcements is not going to be enough to take this game back, although it could draw the game out a couple more turns. Well, let's say he got a pike. And then his In come the guys. Or what you got? I got a block right here. All of them on this one. <laughs> Two and two. Two and one. I mean, if you're gonna two two, why not two two? I don't think if Daniel's one card in hand is a gut shot to like make that trade happen with Huntmaster, then there's a zero percent chance he can even win the game. So I think that blocking with Huntmaster is just fine there too, probably. And everything on Daniel's side is dead. He did get Evan to 13. Credit for that. Counting it up, yep, that is 2,000. All right, we're uh, conceding. Well, that game three went exactly how the <laughs> Naya decks want it to go and exactly how the Delver decks don't want it to go. Well, let's pretend.